Hello, I'm Matt from Practical BI and in this Power BI quick tip video we're looking at decomposition trees. Okay, so I'm in a report here. Um, I've got a couple of visuals already, uh, but the data set that I'm using is just a, an absence data set, so um, employee absence. Let's just have a look at that so you can understand some of the data I've got here. I've got uh, an absence ID, and then the, the employee number for the employee that was absent, and then various details about that employee, so their uh, division department and team, their age, length of service. I've got an absence type, um, and I've also got um, an absence length um, based on the, the start and end date of the absence. Okay, so uh, let's start by adding the, the decomposition tree to our report. I'm just going to uh, resize it and uh, I'll format it as well, just so that it shows up a bit more clearly for you. So the first thing I want to do is um, drag in a field that I want to analyze. So that's the field that I want to try and um, uh, drill down into and, and, and understand some of, the, some of the trend that's there. So I'm going to use average absence length. I'm going to bring that into my uh, data fields to analyze. You can see straight away I've got average absence length there um, and I've got my total value across uh, across my data set based on my, my filters as I have them uh, which is 4.63 days for me there. Let's start adding a, a few fields to our explain by um, section there. So um, we could add grade for example, I could, uh, I could add city, we could add um, maybe division or maybe let's um, let's add length of service um, and absence type. Okay, you can, and you can see that once I've added these fields, I've got a little plus symbol that's appeared um, next to my average absence length, uh, and that lets me choose how I want to split my data at the next level. So if I click on that, left click, I have a few options. Either I can go with a high or low value, and that's where Power BI will find the field with the highest value for your metric, um, or I could do the same for the lowest value. Um, or I can select uh, a field myself. So let's start by just selecting um, city. You can see that now um, I've expanded out that average absence length to another level and I've got the average absence length for each city now. Um, not much variation there you can see from the from the start to, from the top to the bottom. Um, let's let's try and explain one of these with um, the high value. I'll let Power BI select the high value from the field this time. You can see that it's identified length of service um, and we've got where the length of service is 15 years, we have a much higher um, average episode, episode length there. Um, and I could continue to, to, to try and understand that a bit more. Um, let's have a look at that by grade. Uh, and you can see I presumably only, um, potentially only got one absence in there, but I've definitely only got one grade there as well. So I could add my um, number of absences measure to my tooltips. Um, that will help me as I hover over here. I can see actually, yep, yeah, I'm only looking at one one absence there. And I could even um, apply uh, a filter to this just to say I, I'm only interested in trends where my number of absences is greater than five, let's say, for example. Um, and then you can see that's that's uh, disappeared there in terms of, in terms of grade because I haven't got enough absences um, for me to apply any significance to the to the findings of the analysis there. So I could continue um, expanding these out, um, looking at the highest value. Again, I can allow Power BI to choose that. I can see, for example, here that injury has a much higher average absence length. Um, and you can you can drill down uh, as far as you want through the different fields. Uh, down to 50 levels is, is the, the limit currently. Um, and the, the beauty of the decomposition tree is that the, the end user, the consumer of the report, has exactly the same um, functionality in terms of being able to expand out those levels. Uh, so there's a, a, a brilliant element of self-serve analysis there. Um, but you can restrict the, the, the way in which they interact with, with the decomposition tree. I could, for example, lock this, um, this field here, city. And what that would mean is, is they will um, automatically start from, from a perspective of having, having city first and then they can choose um, further fields to, to split by or again let, let Power BI do that split. Let's just have a look at one of the other options within the format tab here. So if I go to um, analysis, what you'll see is I've got my enable AI splits turned on. There's also this analysis type. Um, so at the moment that's set to absolute. But if I look at relative, and what that means is that instead of looking at the, the, the absolute value and, and looking for the highest absolute value, it'll start to look at the, the relative difference across my, um, my data set um, and choose the highest value on, on that basis instead.
Other than that, we've got exactly the same formatting options as, as uh, most of the other Power BI visuals, um, with, with some specific to the, to the decomposition tree, uh, but again, just around the, the kind of format and appearance there. Um, and I can also um, filter my, uh, my decomposition tree here using the other visuals. Um, so I could, for example, select manufacturing here you can see that uh, the, 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 the visuals updated accordingly um, again I could I could add in other departments or select other departments and you'll see that everything um, updates to reflect that selection and so that's the composition trees um, I hope you found this uh, this video useful if you have please do like and subscribe and if you have any feedback or any questions please do add them to the comments um, and I look forward to speaking to you again